I have never spoken to anyone who has said to me that he's never seen conflict between teachers and students, right? I remember when I was in high school, there was a major crisis between a student and a teacher. The teacher was known for coming up with all kinds of saying, like, today's either eggs or young ones. And he, she said, boy, come here to me. Biddy biddy what's hanging over you. And the boy reversed the saying, I will not spell it out for you. Be bright. <laughs> she said, today, let me tell you, biddy biddy what's hanging over you. And the boy just changed one word in it. And the, th that was a major crisis. People were on the floor laughing. And the, the principal didn't make it any better. The principal said, uh, well, maybe, maybe, teacher, you need to speak to the students in language they understand, because maybe, in, in a sense, the boy didn't understand that by changing that one word, it would have had such a profound effect on the statement. They've always been, but, but so some of the conflicts have, have created a laugh. Others have been violent. And we have with us in the spotlight this morning Dr. Leah Kim Samaj, my brother, is a psychologist, and of course, he's done a lot of writing on the matter of human behavior. And so, we ask of him today to respond to the question of whether or not the, so the social distance, as we would pronounce it in Europe, between teachers and students is wearing thin. Doc, how are you doing? Alive and well, my brother. Alive and well. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you remember conflict between teacher and student at school? But you've always had some quote-unquote bad boy. <laughs> yes. And I, even further, about 20 years ago, I went to see the then Minister of Education with a program I developed to mm -hmm. deal with the boys who are in the departure lounge. That's why yes. you euphemistically call it. Every school had about 10 to 12 boys yes. who are in the departure lounge. I mean, at everything they, like they're, in the, they're on the verge of being expelled, mm -hmm. you know, because of different, you, oftentimes verbal, but then sometimes physical altercation with teacher. Yes. And um, no, the two big difference we're dealing with now. One, the era of social media has removed a lot of the pro-social agents. Mm -hmm. Because look, if whatever perversion, quote unquote, you have, once you log on to it one or two times, it starts coming to you automatically. Mm -hmm. So it you, you get a lot of endorsement for whatever perversion you may have, yes. that, right? So it's 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 on steroids. It's ac it's accentuated. But the other thing is now we have cameras. Mm -hmm. The big, I mean, there's a saying that in terms of even in America, the violence against black people is not new. The only difference, there are cameras now. Mm -hmm. So many of the things that happened in school back then, there were no cameras taking pictures and putting it on the internet immediately and so on, so that mm -hmm. people in that class knew about it. Sometimes the rest of the yeah. school only just heard about it. But now it has been documented, so it, you, it can give us the impression that it's a totally different situation now. No, it's not. We Rather than us having better recording devices. <laughs> well, but, but I'll add the other piece, though, that some of the factors that would... Look, a, a big portion of what school does is socialization. Not yes. pedagogy, just one component. The last two years, the pedagogy was marginal. But the socialization forces were almost absent. Wow. So that a lot of young people, between dance hall music and cable TV, that was the main socializing agent at work, at least during school time. I mean, mm -hmm. when I was in school, I was a cadet. I was in the science club. I was in the, you know, all these other pro-social agencies taking place. But right. then now, Many schools don't have them because you have a two-ship system. But the, the last year of some people try, trying to do education via the internet, which to a large extent was very, very poor. But the pro-social activities, 
got some beating also. So that it's a mistake for us to say, you know, it is dramatically different. One thing I, I saw in the video, which is what you expect, sometimes people will be edging on the issues, but then there are other people who stood up and said, no, 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 stop it, stop it. Yeah. And they, and they pulled them apart mm. and so on. So you expect to see that. So it, it, it's not a new time, everybody. You're absolutely correct. It's not a new e era. Yeah. It, it's, it's interesting, though, because, you know, I, as I started reflecting, a lot of the conflict between teachers and when I was in school and, you know, I went to Savlamar High and my friends across the road at Manning's, they said the same thing when I was growing up. Like the conflict between the ten big boys and the teachers was usually for the purpose of joke. <laughs> we, we, ah. we, would, we would want to see. We, would, for example, we had we had a, a, I'm gonna call his name. We had a Goliath in our group mm -hmm. who who towered over everybody, including the tallest teacher, and <laughs> nobody played around with him. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun to see how the teachers related to him because. When the teachers rough us up, we would say, so Miss Wine rough up Goliath. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. that was how, for me, it was a lot of joke. And, and even the teachers after graduation would say, boy, you didn't give a lot of trouble, you know. And it was so bad. But when I, when I grew up, I recognized that school had real conflict, real violence. Absolutely. You know? But there, there, there's always some, uh, usually boys also, who literally, they get attention and they get their mm -hmm. ratings by telling joke in class. Yes, man. By, by disrupting the class. Yes, man. All right? So th that was the, one of the main source of... So every time something would happen and they would turn it into a joke or they would ask a question, not, mean, not a serious question, but it's really intended right. to disrupt the class. And, and then the teacher would retaliate and so on and somebody would say something. And then it would get into a, almost like a tracing match sometime. <laughs> yes. You know? And then, and then the boys had specific names, you know. For like the teachers. Rome and Pix. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Once you hear somebody named Pix, you know, you know that that boy will take a set of everybody. Right? And then you had Rome. <laughs> so you know that those were the attention seekers. Yeah, a, right? lot, a lot of it was verbal and emotional. But yes. really, and then you get sent out of class. Yes. Or you get sent to the principal office or, you know, some things along those lines. But the difference now is that we have cameras and the cameras, mm -hmm. the cameras elevated to a whole nother level. And we, and we have a more organized uh, and, and, and more updated gang edition of what we had when we were growing up, where we would, we, you would have a crew of, of boys who would beat up another crew of boys because they like to come across and say hi to to their sisters. I mean, now, and I'm looking at the transition from my childhood to now, people have guns in schools. They yes, to, yes. There are schools now with, with, with metal detectors. Or they can very quickly, just, they can make a phone call and then somebody's by yes. the gate and somebody's in the school in no time. So mm -hmm. things that would would be contained at a lower level can now escalate to a higher level much quicker just by, mm -hmm. again, back to technology, just by a phone call. And then mm -hmm. some, next thing, that, that cool, meet them at the gate and even, sometimes even invade the school, come right yeah. on the school compound and the, the, the conflict now takes on a not, whole other meaning. So yeah. we, we really have to look at it from that perspective, not just saying that that was then and this is now, we never had those things in the past. We'd be lying to ourselves. Yeah, when I was a child, you'd have had to jump the Tate Cemetery wall <laughs> and run through the morass <laughs> in order to go get the crew. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Because you, there's, there's no phone call to, to call you know, your people to come meet you and all of that. Yes, yeah. yes. So I think it's important yeah. to recognize the difference between then and now and not make it seem as if, well, then back then was just perfect and ideal and nothing yes. happened. But the, the good the, old days. So called. <laughs> so-called good yeah. old days. But the technology has to evolve to meet the circumstance. So that's why now people are talking about metal detectors. Mm? Mm -hmm. And even mm -hmm. banning uh, the, you know, the, 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 the cell phones in the classroom because oftentimes they become a disruptive agent. Many years ago, you know, I did say 
I, I did anticipate at one point where that cell phone would transition in the school system mm -hmm. in, in, in a sense that, look, the computer that's put a man on the moon, the average cell phone, or even a banger, has more capacity than that computer did in 1969. Yes. Yes. Now, it is not implausible for us now to literally use it as a teaching tool, even in the classroom. So there's a mm -hmm. math test, and then you're doing the test on your device. By the time you're finished, mm -hmm. hmm? all right, finished now, and within a matter of 20 seconds, the paper is graded. Mm -hmm. And you get back a score as to what your score is, and then the, the, the total distribution is on the whiteboard. And if you want, your test score can immediately be emailed to your mother, same time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? So I envision that. But then what I've been hearing from schools, again, the cell phone is used for other purposes. Yes. I mean, yes. principals have told me that, especially at the prestigious school, every time, it's usually the students who are the most disruptive. Every time they catch them with a phone in the class, what they're actually listening to or watching on the phone is not something yeah. that, the, that the school will endorse in any way at all. So that it well, is... Well, from that... You know, the, the cell phone can be used to do some really wonderful things, but in the cases, in some cases, it is used to de detract from learning. Absolutely. So that if we could just find a way to just incorporate it, which in a sense, that's what we tried to do dur during the coronavirus, at least. Yes. But we, I didn't, we didn't do a very good job just because of the, the, the bandwidth and the capacity available in the country. Yeah. But, but you know, I'm not convinced, I'm not convinced that, <clears throat> that the, the world itself has dealt with the post-2005 era. I'm not certain that with the launch of the Internet and everything, I'm not certain that we've actually maximized it. Uh, I, I think in some cases we are more scared of it because I remember speaking with people from 15 different universities and ask them what's the difference between their school carnival and now and everybody including our own UWI Mona campus said that herbs me can't even read again you know because cameras ah yes yes because ring road was a thing to the point where there's a calypso of song about ring road and when I speak to my friends in Canada and elsewhere, they tell me, in my generation, the thing that we used to do during our carnival or our party on campus, these can't do it because they'll be on YouTube. But again, you know, you're saying that what happened in Vegas, what happened on Ring well, Road, stayed on Ring Road. Right. <laughs> but, but, but not anymore. anymore. Not anymore. You see, so that's a big yes. difference. And yes. even where we started the conversation, there was a whole other activity i'm not sure if we know country boys where we have this option where boys in some of the school would put put mirror tag mm -hmm. a piece of mirror on them shoes and yes. they go stand up next to teacher and put them yes. foot <laughs> <laughs> you, you heard those in that country too <laughs> yes man yes man <laughs> My friends used to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, your friends, right? You, you, you know people who used to do it, but not you. <laughs> yes, but no, man, not at all. <laughs> yeah. Not so, at all. My, my, my mother would not have the end of it. Yeah, <laughs> if yeah. I, if I were to have performed in any such thing. And if we, if we yeah. go further back, to broaden this construct further, no, uh, no herbs. When I, my early areas of research, looking at juvenile delinquency, so, mm -hmm. so to speak, looking at what happens to boys when they get in trouble and so on. And my large data set was usually the United States. Right. And one of the things that I, the data told us, and you probably can substantiate from your work, that during the teenage years, black boys and white boys get in the same kind of disruptive behavior. But mm -hmm. two different things happen. The white boy, you call his father. His mm -hmm. father comes to school, gives him a good talking to, and they leave mm -hmm. together. The right. black boy, you call, nobody comes. Mother. But she don't come. Or mm -hmm. even if she does come, 
the next step, he's more likely to get put in a juvenile um, facility. Yes. So whereby he's now institutionalized and the process start. And when you look across mm -hmm. the data set, black boys and white middle class boys were involved in the same kinds of activities mm -hmm. when they were in high school. Same thing in Europe. And I'm, sure, and I'm sure, and I'm sure, the data uh, yeah. for Europe also. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's not different in Jamaica because if they can call your parents and depending mm -hmm. on who your parent is and the parent turns up, the issue is done there. So, mm -hmm. but then now it is escalated and that child now starts a downward spiral in terms mm -hmm. of the road or the institutions that now start to control your behavior. So right. this is, and we keep forgetting that no child can be unattached. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's the kind of stuff we, 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 we have always seen that kind of data set. What happens? The same kind of behaviors, the same kind of disruptive behavior. But mm -hmm. one gets institutionalized and the other gets talking to. And uh, look at the recently that Judge Kavanaugh with, with the swearing in ceremony with the question in, in, in Congress and all the activities about the party he was alleged to have been at and this girl got drunk and how she came and testified that she was at a party and his friends were so that the kind of things it's all there mm -hmm. so the, the, but the difference now now we have cameras now and the mm -hmm. camera can now seal that event what could have been a passing what could have been something that no longer exists it now become concretized Yes. So, so the direction the school and the Ministry of Education and the society goes is very important because I, I've been looking at some data that looks at what happens when students go to institutions, right? We have like Rio Cobre, we have Bamboo, we have them all over the place, right? What happens to those children as against the ones that, get, that got a mentor? Right? We've been looking at these data and the findings are, are really startling. I mean, we don't have a large data set yet enough for publication, but it's been interesting because the ones who end up in state care uh, with state attention, with, I like to I prefer the word state attention, uh, are, are going down a slippery slope. Right? And the, the same, sometimes from the same family, same background, same, same everything, the ones who got a mentor turn out to become their CEOs. Absolutely. And so that's why when I approached the Ministry of Education 20 years ago with a program, mm -hmm. let's target that 10 to 15 boys who are in the departure lounge. And right. now we start a program for rehabilitation from there. How mm -hmm. can you start? Now, it turns out that, what the, 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 to quote the minister then, we have no budget for this. Yes. I've I said, if you don't find a budget for this, all will happen. Yes. You will have now deferred this process from mm. the Ministry of Education to the Ministry, Ministry of National Security, National Security plus and GCT. You have, have a budget for that. You plus have a budget for this. You have to have a budget for that. And a much <laughs> larger budget. A much larger <laughs> budget. About this, yes. yeah, exactly. So many of the activities, so the things that sometimes boys... You've heard boys will be boys. The kind mm -hmm. of things that boys will do. One, to impress girls. Boys do some mm -hmm. foolish things. Huh? Mm -hmm. Some life-threatening things. To get attention. Huh? The kind of comments, the disruption in the class, all of those things. It's, it's all part of the process. Now, it is not more the teachers now. Their game has to be further up. To diffuse and to cope with those kind of things without getting into an altercation with the students. It's almost like being a stand-up comic. And, and, and what about training for, for teachers, uh, Doc? Because we're looking at a situation where people are not understanding that there's a logic to boys' behavior, and that is not just biological. There's also a social logic or a cultural logic to their behavior. For example, we know now that if a boy stays under a tree and can't call girls for the day, the 60th one will say yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> People 
be like if you did that, you know. They don't yes, like yes, it. yes. They hate at all. They, I have some friends who just hate data. They like dreams. But you see, that's I, true. I, I see. I'm not even sure so far. I'm 60. I'm sure by about <laughs> by about that, 40. That's what my said. Yeah. They found that the average is 60. 60 before you, before you get a yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. And but look, look, go back further. Remember that our entire educational system was really mm. built around the socialization of girls. Yes. Remember that, you know, we have seven all girl all boys high school and fourteen all girl schools. Fifteen. It's not it's fifteen now. So we did 15, not yeah. we not the idea of and we have a teaching core that is ninety five percent female. Mm. So I rem, I remember my youngest son asking me if, as far back as prep school, Daddy the only thing that men can do in school is be security guard and be PE teacher. <laughs> you hear me? Because oh boy. <laughs> every school he had been to to that point, that's the yes. only the security guard and the PE teacher. And the PE teacher. Oh my. And then that same son may I reference to me one time, but daddy, you know that the teachers don't like when the boys raise their hand. The teacher don't call on the boys, you know. Mm. It's only girls. And again, I remember that same son had that dilemma where the teacher at the school he was going was complaining that the boys come in to, after lunch too sweaty. Mm -hmm. So she wanted them to sit out under the tree and play jacks during lunchtime. Yes, I don't know about yes. you, Herbs. When I was in primary school, before school start, my uniform sweat. <laughs> during the <laughs> recess, it, it sweat. <laughs> when lunchtime, I'm in the, my uniform soak again. Yeah. Right. My, my my time was lunch. We would my school had a lot of fruit trees. So yes. Especially if you're poor like me and sometimes don't have lunch, you go hunting. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so the boys so have a tree, mango tree. <laughs> yeah. So the boys came in the classroom after lunch, smell like ram goat. Yes, man. Right. So again, the teach. But why can't Bromelain hormones turn up? Yes. <laughs> why can't you boys? Why why you play so much? Why are you so sweaty, sweaty? Why can't you take you know, use your lunch time and relax like the girls? So that yeah, maybe maybe because I have one point five four times more energy. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So that it's all of those elements mm -hmm. that so much of the school system was really not designed for. How mm -hmm. do we contain? diffuse that male energy. Yes. I have a problem with this, this term that they you know, call toxic masculinity, and which oh, I boy. really have a problem with it. So that when you don't, but the energy, if it's not diffused, mm -hmm. it goes from being productive to become destructive. I have a simple treatment for those words. Misogyny, all of those words. I have a very simple treatment a philosophical treatment that I remember discussing with my professor at SOAS. I said, Miss, is it correct to say that if something does not have an opposite or if something has an opposite that is, that is obvious, but the opposite word is not used, wouldn't you say then that, that that's a campaign and prejudice? And she walked down from the, the platform and came down and hugged me. She said, did you know there's more misandry than misogyny. But Absolutely. What, where, where do we put the, 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 the value? Absolutely. Why should you have toxic masculinity when, they, when you have no toxic femininity in, in, the, in the, the media or in the data? In the literature, yes. No, is it yes. so, the, the, so that male behavior, maleness, has become toxicized, to create a word? Mm -hmm. You know, yes. and, so, and then many of these boys now, once you... Once you label somebody no herbs, you can now destroy them. Yes. yes. Once you become labeled. But even mm -hmm. the class, teachers will know. In fact, my daughter, who is now a Supreme Court judge in New York, she was labeled in school because she don't mm -hmm. take chat from nobody, including principal. <laughs> so when you say something and she thinks it's wrong, she will correct you. She will tell you, no, you yeah. can't do that. You can't say that. Right? Yeah. But no, no, she's the judge, the Supreme Court judge now, so they have to listen to her. But that's what happens. <laughs> so boys get labeled, and any, once you get labeled, by the time you get to the staff room, the label yeah. is now transferred. And so every other teacher now is now seeing you through the light of the label of that teacher who labeled you. Yeah, we have, we have a lot of work to do. Thanks, uh, Dr. Leah Kim Samaj. 
Uh, God bless. We talk again. It's news time, everybody. The pleasure is mine.